Good day everyone. Uh, this is an exciting video for us. You'll see we are looking at a brand new, freshly uncreated Cunique 21. And the purpose of this set of uh, instructions is going to be a couple things. First, we're going to talk about how to prep this machine, how to get it set up for uh, putting on the continuum frame. Secondly, we're also going to talk about how to actually put the machine on the frame. Uh, as you know, our videos have pretty much had the 14 plus on it. We're upgrading to the 21. And as you can see, the cat inspecting it. Our purpose of these videos are going to be getting it set up. You'll see that this is the, how the machine looks exactly as it comes out of the box. And if you remember the 14, the machine was pretty much mostly assembled with just a few little things to put on it uh, before we could put it on the frame. This has got a little bit more assembly to it. So I'm going to be following the manual, pretty much following the steps to set the machine up, prep it with everything that we need to, to get it set up for the frame. So I've got set up on the table here a lot of the pieces we're going to need. Um, we've got a variety of handles. We've got some wheels we need to put on the machine. And it also came with a couple of boxes of information, uh, a couple of boxes of stuff. One box actually has the uh, power cord in it. So if you got a box with a power cord, that's fine. The other box is going to contain a whole bunch of other pieces. It's going to contain all the wrenches. It's going to contain the little display that's going to go on. You'll see the encoders are in the box. And we're going to pretty much take the pieces out of these boxes and prep the frame. So we're going to be beginning with step one in a minute and start prepping the frame for the, uh, for the uh, QD21. Okay, so now we're following, we're going to go right to the user manual that came with the machine. We're going to page one, step one, set up an assembly, wheel assembly. So the parts I have here, I've got a couple things. Um, I've got two sets of wheel assemblies. I've got this one here. This is actually the front wheel assembly. And I know that because if you look at the picture, it's got the piece of rubber with two holes in it. This is going to go right there on the front. And on the back, I've got a separate wheel assembly. You notice this one doesn't this one doesn't have the rubber. This just has the two holes with a couple of bolts next to it. This is going to go on the back. So step one is basically putting these two on the machine. Now, I have two sets of uh, sets of hardware I have to file, use. The first one, if you get a little box of stuff, there is a bag that says M6 shoulder bolt, 8 millimeter by 12 millimeter. This is what we're going to use to put the uh, front, front, front set of wheels on. And we're going to use the 4 millimeter wrench that came, I, I, like everything Grace does, they give you all kinds of fresh tools, and I'm quite impressed. They've actually got these tools labeled now. I don't know if you can see in the camera. It actually is labeled as four millimeter, so it's very obvious now which wrench is rich. So I'm going to use the four millimeter wrench, and I'm going to take. I'm going to try and do this alone here. I'm going to set this underneath the two holes where this goes, and take my two shoulder bolts. And we're going to feed them through here. Now this may take a little trial and error here, so I may fast forward as I'm kind of playing around. Got that one started. We'll do the same thing on the back. All right. We're going to take, tighten the front one down. All right, and do the same for the back. By the way, if you recall one of my earlier videos, we referred to the 14 plus machine we had as Esther. Um, that's the name that Janet's grandmother had, and that's the uh, name she chose for that. Well, begin, this is the bigger machine. We've decided to go with Esther May for this machine. So this is Esther May I'm working on right now. So now we've got the, got the front wheels attached to Esther May. Now, just for purposes of being able to see what I'm doing, I'm going to spin it around here. And I've got my again my rear wheel assembly. I got the uh, with the two with the set of bolts. I am going to set this up underneath here and line it up. Okay, I think you can kind of see what I'm doing here. Now, in this case, I'm using another set of screws, the M6 by 20 screws that's in its own separate bag here. So I'm going to take these, open them up, and we're going to insert them on the back of the machine. So one is going to go in here and I think I, ooh, I got it lined up on the first try. I'm impressed. So we'll get this one started. It's a little trickier. I'm kind of cheating a little bit. I've been kind of playing with this for the last few minutes. What I've come to realize is that while the bolts kind of turn on a little hard and I kind of realize that just playing with it, but it's also kind of hard to turn this thing completely in a circle while I'm trying to get it in. So what I've done is, as much as I love how, 
how the Grace Companies label these things. I went to the old standby, the old bolts that came with our continuum frame, the L wrench, Allen wrenches. Um, this works just as well. I've got the four millimeter Allen wrench, and I've already done the one on the uh, on the left on the right side of the machine as you're facing it. Now this is the one on the on the left side. Um, I'm just going to use this and tighten this down as well. Uh, for whatever reason, these just turn in a little bit more snugly than the ones on the front did. Might just be an issue with our particular set of hardware. I'm not sure. They are going in, and I think the odds are very good that they're going to be in there pretty snug when I'm all said and done. But uh, this is pretty much how I did the one on the right and now the one on the left to get this in place. So all right, that's snug. And basically, I've now completed step one. I have now got the uh, wheel assembly installed on the Q21. So uh, bear with me a moment, and then we'll move on to the next step. Okay, moving right along. We are now going to move to step two, the handle assembly. And you'll see I've got the handles. These handles are ultimately be on the front of the machine. We're actually going to mount them to the uh, to the actual uh, Q21. So I'm on page two of the instructions, handle assembly. Uh, step one, of the, uh, this first step of that, move the handle cover plate from the machine by unscrewing the four M6 by 16 millimeter screws. Well, the picture shows four of those things. I only see one, so apparently there's a there's a bit of a discrepancy in the documentation. Now that may, this may be different by the time you all get your machine, but I see the one screw. I've got my that happy little four millimeter orange handled wrench. I'm going to remove it. And oh, isn't that slick? It's actually hinged now. The original instructions showed this whole plate coming off with four screws. I've got my set of handlebars. I need to make sure that these two little wire things are on the bottom side so that they're going to plug in on the underside under of this thing once I get it set up. So what I'm going to do is place, feed this around the needle assembly here and bring it up and slide it in place here. It looks like it fits in quite nicely. And I am going to put my screw in place to close the little trap door. There we go. And there appears to be some level of adjustment to this. Let me get more comfortable here. So if I take, turn it in. I'm assuming I would want this at a real, relatively even height for my wife to actually use the machine. I'm just going to set it here for now. Kind of, kind of horizontal. This may get adjusted over time, and I'm going to take and make this relatively snug. Okay, so now the handlebar is in place and it doesn't seem to be moving anywhere. Make sure I got it tight. Okay, that's basically step two. Put it in and tighten the one, the one uh, six millimeter screw that I removed. Now it says insert the handle cables into the plugs, making sure that the green stickers are facing up. So now I see two of these things. It that makes no specific reference to exactly which one goes where. So I'm going to assume that the left one gets plugged in on the left and the right one gets plugged in on the right. So you can see there's the green sticker. It's facing up and here's my little connector right here. So I'm going to take and slide it in. Oh, that plugs in quite nicely. The one on the right you'll see is kind of on the right hand side. I know my hand's kind of in the way there, but there's, there's where the one on the right goes. Green sticker is up. I'm going to take and plug this in and there and it feels like it clicks in place all right so now i've completed the handle assembly uh let me get my parts ready and we'll move on to the next step okay now i've turned to page three handle adjustment and a little bit of confusion there it talked about needing a five millimeter t handle allen wrench which uh, I did not find it in the packaging anywhere, but it turns out I may not need it anyway. Um, this is actually a pretty simple step, and you'll notice that from a previous step, I've actually tilted the handles down a little bit. Um, I suspect that we'll be doing more adjustment once we get uh, Esther May up on the frame and uh, Janet starts working with it. But I thought the angle might be a little bit better if I lowered it. So now what we need to do is take the handles and kind of straighten them out a little bit. So you'll see that there's actually a little clamp on each end of this. I'm going to pull this clamp up and out of the way for open. It kind of loosens them up. And I'm going to take and adjust the handle so that it's probably a bit more inducive for using. So I'm going to point it up and then take the clamp and tighten it back down. And a little bit of muscle power is needed here. Like I said, I'm not doing this perfect, but uh, you know, Jenna will be, uh, be able to adjust it later. I, at least I can help her adjust it. Do the same for the right hand side as well. Flip the lever up, turn it so it's about the same angle there, get it in place. And then, now it looks like they want to slide downward. So I, I'd be careful when you loosen it. Don't let it slide down. I don't know if it causes any, any makes any issues or not, but uh, 
but I think it'd probably be a little better if, if uh, you just don't let it slide down. So, so now basically I've got the handles using the two clamps. I've got it put in the right direction so that uh, I've got the handles pretty much in a, let me just straighten this one out a little bit here. This looks a little cockeyed. Straighten it and close it up. Okay, so that's the general process there. Now I'm gonna complete this and move on to the next step. Okay, so at this point, I should be following step four and actually putting on the OLED display. Um, I'm not gonna do that here only because I'm also dealing with QCT. Um, Esther's got QCT on her, and I need to move some parts for QCT off of Esther onto Esther May. So at this point, it makes more sense for me to get Esther off of the frame and take off the parts I need to, and then uh, do continue with the prep on Esther May. So to take Esther off, I'm gonna do a couple of things. First, obviously I'm gonna disconnect all the cords. So everything is unplugged, all the power is unplugged, and all that, nothing is turned on. Make sure nothing is turned on before you begin. I'm going to disconnect the power cable. Anything that's currently connected to Esther, I'm going to unplug. So I'm going to unplug the power cable. I'm going to unplug the USB connector that's uh, connected into the uh, carriage. I'm going to connect everything for QCT. I'm going to disconnect the upper and lower encoders that are currently on Esther. Take that all off. So essentially, I've got nothing about Esther is currently plugged into it right now. Um, I'm also going to unplug, you probably can't see here, this is the tablet. That's how I'm going to do some stuff with the tablet. So I'm going to take the tablet off at the moment, disconnect the power to that, disconnect everything. Also, I have got the uh, the belt, the short belt that's used for QCT. I'm actually going to um, take, I remember from my previous video, I've got the two knobs, the one on the right loosens it, and the one on the left kind of feeds the belt. I'm gonna not only just loosen the belt, I'm gonna completely take it out. So I'm gonna basically, gonna basically rotate this thing until I completely remove the belt from this assembly. And the reason I'm doing that is basically I am going to have a different a different bracket that's going to go under Esther May. She's a much bigger machine, so it's got a bigger bracket. I need to move the belt to that position. So I'm going to completely take the belt off and I'm going to feed the belt out of the motor board. You see I'm kind of just pulling it up from the bottom here so that the belt is, is completely out of the motor board. This way I'm free to lift the machine off the carriage. Um, I'm also going to walk around and, and you probably can't see from this angle, I'm actually going to take the tablet off as well. And this is just, a, a, just kind of a, a belt here. Uh, sorry, a bolt. I'm just going to just completely remove it. There we go. Lift that off and disconnect that and set the tablet off to the side here. Um, again, if you don't have QCT, that's not an issue, but I want to get that off as well. Uh, let's see. I also want to, I'm not going to complete, I'm not going to completely remove it, but uh, I just move my camera real quick. The long belt that's here that I need that controls the horizontal movements for QCT. I am actually, I am not going to completely take it off of the motor board like I did earlier, earlier, but I am going to, and forgive me while I'm kind of playing with this, I am going to completely disconnect it and just feed it out. And the reason I'm doing this is I want to be able to play around with the carriage a little bit when I put Esther May on. And I don't want to be restricted. If I have to move the carriage around, I don't want anything that's going to break the belt. So I physically got the belt disconnected from, from, the, uh, uh, the, from the right side of the machine. So at this point, I'm almost ready to move things. But the last step I have to do, as you'll see, is I've got my, uh, my rails in the way. So what I'm going to do is... I'm gonna just slide this all the way down to the end here, and I'm pulling my long belt with me, but that's okay. I'm gonna be messing with it later. And I am actually going to physically remove the take-up rail and the idler bar so I can get the machine out. I'm gonna lift the wheel up at the right side of the machine, pop that out of place, and set that down to the side. And now I can go to the other end of the machine and lift this rail out and get that out. So now I've completely removed the rail And now I'm just going to take it and just pull it through the throat and take it out. I'm just going to set it aside for now. I just set it on the ground. Now, I have to take the idler rail out. All right, what I've done off camera, I actually removed the, uh, the two screws that hold the clamp in place at either end. These are the screws here. And I used the green handled three millimeter wrench to loosen them. Then, can lift off with a little fastener at either end as well. And at this point, I can actually lift the entire idler rail off. And so I'm going to do that right now and hoist this up. And again, very carefully 
pull it through the throat of the machine. And we'll set this down on the ground as well for now. Get that out of the way. Okay, so now I'm able to lift the machine off of the rails, but before I do that, I'm actually gonna do a little bit more here. I don't know if this is required necessarily, but I'm gonna do it just to make my life a little easier. I'm actually going to remove the, uh, the supply rails, the top and the bottom one, off the front of the machine as well. And uh, I'll explain why I'm doing that in a minute, but it's a similar process. I'm just gonna lift them off at either end, and you'll see the bottom one has got the same fastener screws that, that I will, the bolts that I will need the uh, three millimeter wrench in again to actually loosen like so, I'll take that either end, we'll move both of them off and set them off to the side. And then after that, we'll come back and continue on with the, uh, with the setup of the machine. Be right back. Okay, now that I have all the rails off, I should be ready, I believe, to actually lift Esther, the Q14 Plus, off of the frame. Now, I need to be cognizant of the fact that there's still an encoder on the left-hand side here that I'm standing next to. And I've got the uh, I got the channel lock on the right hand side, and I've still got the belt on the bottom. So hopefully nothing is going to tangle when I lift this thing off. So one, two, three, up, and I think we're good. Yes, we are. Everything is coming off, and we're going to take Esther. Here are our big and little, big and little. Uh, Esther and Esther May. So now that it's off, I got a little work I want to do on the frame. So I'm going to do that real quick. I'll explain what I'm doing in a second and then I'll be right back. Okay, I should point out as I move on to my next step, I'm not really following any instructions at this point. Pretty much when I started taking an Esther off the frame, um, there was just kind of me working off of the knowledge of what I had when I put the thing together in the first place. So along those same lines, now that I've got Esther off the frame and all the rails off, and the reason I took the two rails off in the front, I need to make an adjustment to the frame before I put Esther May on. Esther May, of course, has got a bigger throat than Esther. I've got to take this bracket this, that holds the rails. I need to slide it outward. I need to slide it in that direction simply because I got to allow for the fact that the machine's got much further to go than it did before. So I've got my four millimeter wrench. There are two root, two bolts that I had need to loosen. So I'm going to loosen the one in the front here. Just give it a few turns and loosen it up. I'm out I'm working on the left hand side of the machine. I'll need to repeat this on the right hand side when all said and done. Now I'm going to actually loosen the one in the back. I now that I've loosened those two bolts, I'm able to pull it outward until I get to, as you may be able to see, keep pulling, keep pulling right there, to this other mark right here. This is the mark that's needed for the 21. So I pull it out to this mark. This, again, this is how the frame came in the first place. Now that I've done that, all right, that's in place. So now I've pulled this one out to be where it needs to be. And you'll see, again, I got my slot where it should be right there. Um, I think you can see that. So now I'll just do the exact same thing on the other side. Of course, you'll see now that the, uh, that the rail support is now further out than it used to be by probably about a good six inches. We'll do that on the other side so that when I'm ready to put the machine back on and put the rails on, the rails will be adjusted for the bigger machine. So I hope that made sense. I'll do the other side and I'll be right back. I just want to do a quick run through of exactly what I just did. You can tell that the uh, the rail supports now stick out about six inches further than they did before. So so they're kind of, uh, it could be, again, supporting the larger throat, the longer throat of the 21. Um, again, you really couldn't see very well what I was doing underneath. So let me just go underneath and show the two things that I undid. I undid this little guy right here. And on the inside, this this one right here. These are the two that I undid and loosened. Just used my Allen wrench, loosened it a little bit, slotted these guys out until the second, second mark appeared. And once I did that, um, I slid everything out and then tighten these two guys again. I did it both at the left side of the machine and it all went there at the right side of the machine. So, so um, I got the table ready to go. Now it's a matter of going back and getting the machines prepped and ready, getting uh, estimate prepped and on the, on the uh, frame. So let me work on that and that'll be the next step. Okay, so I'm back to Esther. What I'm going to do, I need to take a few more things off of her before we move forward. I need to tip her on her side, so um, the actual uh, gizmo that holds the thread, that feeds it through, I'm going to take it and screw that, take it off. Again, uh, it was a little sloppier than I intended, but it's off. So I've got that. I'm now going to tip her on her side very carefully, because I know I've still got stuff on the, on the underside over here. 
and I've got a few things I need to take off. First thing I need to take off is this bar here that's got the uh, belt on it for the, for the QCT. I'm just going to take my 4mm orange handled wrench, just get these things off. Remove that bolt and remove this bolt. Okay, so I can take this. So I'm going to set this aside for the moment. I need to also resurrect this uh, this channel lock here because ultimately I need to put this on Estra May. So this is just, I'm just going to take the screw and uh, just pull it off completely here. I've got another screw that goes in its place to kind of fill the gaps and I'm going to need this screw for Estra May as well. So I'm just going to leave the wheel off for the moment and take that off. And even though I've got a new encoder, let me just turn Estra around here so you can see the other side. I'm going to take and remove this encoder as well and take this off. Again, I just want to just, just get the machine back to what it was from square one. And uh, there we go. That thing's a little snug for some reason. Oh, I know why. I've got to loosen. I've got to, I need my another wrench here. Hang on a second. Let me grab my two. Is this the two miller I need? Yeah. I need to loosen the set spring that kind of keeps it tight. There we go. Loosen the set. Now I should be able to take the four millimeter. There we go. And take it right off here. All right, got the encoder off. Like I said, I'm going to get the bolts eventually and put these two wheels back in place with the hardware that came with them originally. Let me turn her around here. Okay. So at this point, I've got everything off of Esther that I need to. Now, I got this other bracket here that was needed for the QCT4 that held the tablets. There's a bit of a trick to get that thing on, and I don't think it's critical I take it off for the moment. So I'm just gonna, I don't need this part for uh, Esther May. She's got her own bracket. So I'm going to take and uh, I'll take this off off screen, and then I'm going to start doing some more prep work on Esther May. So I'll be back in a moment. Okay, I kind of lied slightly. Before I prep Esther May, there's one more thing I want to do. I want to take the encoder off of the carriage. As I said, Esther May came with their own encoders. So I'm going to take this encoder off of the frame right now. So same type of deal. I'm going to loosen the set screw that holds the tension. So that's with the two millimeter wrench. So I've got that done. Now I take my four millimeter wrench. And take off the carriage encoder. Same type of thing. We'll just loosen it, take, take it right off. Like I'm going to preserve the wheel. I'm going to need the wheel um, when I go to put the new one on, but I've got the lower encoder off now. So that's that step. Now on to Esther May. Okay, so now I've basically I've taken everything off of Esther. I've taken off the uh, I've taken off the uh, channel lock. I've taken off the encoder, and I've taken off the bracket that was used for QCT4. And uh, I don't particularly need this bracket anymore, and I don't need the belt. All I really need off of this, and I've already removed it, are the um, are the belt clamps and the tensioners that were on there. I'm going to reuse those on this new belt bracket that I'm going to mount to the bottom of Esther May. Now, this is a different style from what the old one was. The old, you look at the old bracket, it had a little bit of a flange on the end, and it also had just two holes. The new bracket doesn't have the same flange, but it has four holes on it. And there's a very specific set of instructions I need to follow to uh, put them in, to uh, attach the belt to this thing. And specifically, the, the, the addendum instructions that came said, for the 21 machine, which is what we have here, we're going to use the bottom set of holes to mount everything. Um, I am not going to use the top holes at all. So that being said, when I'm going to, if you remember my, uh, my uh, original belt bracket, it came, comes in two pieces for the, for the, uh, for the uh, belt clamp. It's kind of a male-female thing, and so one end sticks out further than the other, and they kind of fit together. And there's actually a set of ridges on the inside of one of these things. This guy, that was what kind of secures the belt in place. I have here the end of a brand new belt that was provided to me, so I'm gonna, like I did with the original video, I'm gonna fit that in place so that the ridges actually line up with the ridges in the belt clamp. I'm gonna take the male end and feed that through. So that fits nice and snug, and uh, make sure I get that in there right. And it would help if I put it right side up. No, I had it right side up. Let's do this again here. Sometimes these things take a little bit of doing. There we go. So now I've got all kind of sandwiched together, so it's holding the belt in place. I'm now going to take 
and mount this thing. It's got the little two, two, two little flanges on the bottom. I'm going to mount that so that it link, lines up with the lower holes on the uh, on the belt clamp. Uh, this is, it came with several 20 millimeter screws, which are a longer set of screws that come. I'm going to feed feed the screw into the uh, into the belt clamp and start it up. And using my three millimeter wrench, I'm going to take this and tighten it down. This actually works a whole lot nicer than the old the old system had a kind of nuts and bolts. This just has these nice little screws that screw into place. It makes it a whole lot easier to work with. I'm now going to take the other um, 20 millimeter bolt, feed that in, and we're going to tie that down. So make them fairly snug, and I, the end result is that you want to have the uh, belt snugly in place. All right, so that's the belt clamp end. Now, the other end of this is the tensioner. So now here's my tensioner, and this is much, much more simple, because simply I'm going, to, I'm, not, I'm going to feed the belt through once I get it back on. So I just put the same flanges on the bottom. I'm using the same lower holes again that I did before. So I'm going to take the lower holes and my uh, shorter bolts this time. I only need the uh, 12 millimeters. I'm going to feed those in because it's a smaller clamp. I'm going to take and use my three, three millimeter wrench to put that in place. Okay, so now I've got the tensioner at one end. I've got the belt clamp at the other. Now I need to put this thing on, on uh, Estrame. And as you recall, this clamp needs to go if you're, sta if you're staying at the front of the machine, it needs to go on the right-hand side. And so there's a couple of holes right there, these two holes here and here. These are the holes I mounted to. So I'm going to line this clamp up, and I've got longer bolts that came with it. I'm going to feed these through and put those in place. And forgive me, I got this upside down. Let's turn it that way. Um, make sure that the belt's on the bottom side. We want to make sure so that that's how so the belt can feed through to the motorboard when I put it on. So we're going to line that up. And this is where I use a four millimeter wrench. Now, this one's a little different. It's got a, it's got kind of a slot. The other clamp just had kind of a straight hole to put it in. Uh, for now, I'm just going to kind of line it up in the middle um, just to have it a place to put it. I may have to kind of adjust that when the time comes. So that's one bolt. And now I'm going to take the other bolt. OK. Now we're going to mount this. Oh, I see. To get it to line up, let me just loosen this a little bit. Putting it in the center just doesn't, doesn't necessarily make a difference. It looks like it has to be at the far end at each end for, the, for them all to line up. So I'm going to put this bolt in here and line that up. There we go. Apparently, this is so that this will fit on both the uh, 21 and the, and the, and the 15 because this is the same multi-purpose clamp for all. Okay, so now I've got the bracket on. For QCT, um, at this point, I think I'm about ready to put Estramay on the frame. So let me just get ready for that, and I'll be right back. Okay, well, let me just back up a little bit, and I can show you that I've now set Estramay on the frame. It's actually sit sitting on the carriage now, so um, went relatively smooth. Of course, got a little bit of weight to it. If you got somebody to help you, it's probably a good thing. But I'm crazy; I do these things by myself. Um, few little things I need to do. I've gone back to my sewing machine instructions now. I want to make sure I'm following everything correctly. So I'm on page five, uh, the carriage adjustment. I need to ensure that all my wheels actually uh, um, line up with, with the track on the carriage. I noticed the front one's a little bit off. It's This one's a little bit too scooted in this direction. I need to pull it back toward me a little bit. So what it talks about doing, there is a screw in each one of these things with the four millimeter wrench. It is the carriage adjustment screw. According to the directions, I can just loosen this. And there we go. Loosen it up. And I should be able to, there we go, slide it over. And you want to ensure that all four, all, all your wheels are touching. And so having loosened that, I just kind of slid it over just a little, just a little smidge in there. And now all the wheels, this particular set of wheels is lining up with the track. So I'm going to take and tighten this back down. Make that relatively snug. Now we're going to move over to the rear wheel here. This one actually looks pretty good. I'm going to see if there's any adjustment needed anyway. So same thing. I'm going to loosen. And nope, doesn't want to move at all. It's perfectly in place. So we'll snug this down. I'm going to do the same thing with the other two wheels. And then we'll come back and do some more setup.
Okay, well, I've gotten all the wheels adjusted, and we made a very interesting discovery. Um, as we were kind of playing and adjusting uh, the wheels, we noticed that the set of wheels on the back on the opposite side weren't touching at all, and it was kind of interesting. And Janet was able to actually take the handles and rock the machine back and forth, so something looked like it was out of whack. What we realized, and this is kind of a nice little tip, the bolts that I put on initially for the front, the front set of wheels, the one here and the one on the opposite side, remember I commented that they fit into a piece of rubber. Well, I apparently I had this bolt tightened a little bit more than its counterpart on the other side. That caused it to be a little wobbly, and that was what caused the uh, the wheel on the back on the back left side of the machine uh, lift off. All I did was actually loosen this bolt a little bit to the point where everything leveled out. Not all the wheels, all four sets of wheels actually touched the track perfectly. So um, that's kind of a tip. If the machine isn't level, you can actually play around with the two bolts on the front set of wheels, either loosen or tighten, whatever the case may be, in order to ensure that the machine sits level. Um, so that was kind of neat to figure out. Um, the next thing I want to do, this is a QCT specific step. I need to take the short belt, and again, that's the belt I just mounted to the bracket, the new bracket I put on the bottom of this thing. I need to thread it through the motorboard. And the motorboard, basically, it's this, it's this big black thing. It sits inside the carriage. It was something we installed as part of QCT, and it's used to actually drive the machine back and forth. Again, we talked about the long belt that moves the machine from left to right. This is the belt that moves it back and forth. So I'm going to take and thread the belt into, into these pulleys. Now, you'll see there's two gray wheels. The idea is that the belt feeds into the, as I'm standing here on the, on the right side of the machine, if you're, if you're using it, it feeds into the right side of the first gray wheel, kind of goes underneath this black pinion and comes up the left-hand side of the other gray wheel. So it kind of feeds through and it's going to feed through to the back. Um, it's very important, and I pointed this out originally, make sure that before you start the threading process that your belt is perfectly straight. In other words, all the ridges are up. You don't want to have a twist in the belt and come to realize that once you've gone through and threaded it and, uh, and from there realize that, uh, that, oh no, you've got to undo it and, and put it back in again. Now, when I did this before with the other belt, my other video is a very long, painful process because this new belt's got a lot of curl to it. And it's really awkward to feed a belt with curl through these pulleys. So this may take me a little bit of doing. I'm going to kind of start the process here and I may end up fast forwarding as, uh, as I get forward here. But basically, I'm going to feed the belt through the left right hand side of the leftmost gray pulley and it needs to go underneath like i said this may take some time and you know what i did the last time i did this i'm going to repeat the same process again i feel confident doing this now that i've got the machine level and this is one of the reasons why i wanted to loosen the long belt it allows me to play around with this a little bit what I'm going to do is I'm going to lift this machine off of the carriage just slightly. I'm going to move it off to the side. And of course, it's not the lightest thing in the world. And set it down on top of the frame. Now with that, I've got a lot more room to work. So at this point now, I'm able to be, I'm going to make sure my belt it doesn't be twists in it. Now I'm going to feed the belt through one end and bring it up the other. Now, like I said, this may take some time. So bear with me while I'm working on this here. In fact, I'm going to take this one step further. I think I can tilt this carriage up on its end here. Yes, so I can actually see the underside. This actually makes it a little bit easier. Feed this through. And you see it kind of comes through. You can It's kind of hard to tell in video. You can see the underside of the sprocket where the belt's coming through. I should be able to take it and feed it through. And just, if I just hook it to the sprocket and turn it. Again, this sprocket's got the same ribs in it that the belt has. And I think I can do this to feed the belt back up through the other side. Okay, we have it. And so now I should be able to lay the carriage back down on its side here. And everything looks correct this time too. Let me make sure the long belt isn't snarled. That doesn't appear to be. Okay, so now if you take a look. You can see this is how the belt needs to come through. As I mentioned, it, it loops around the two great pulleys and it, uh, and it uh, comes out the other end. So now I'm going to, now that I've got this belt threaded, I'm going to put Estrame back on the carriage here. And I need, need to make sure that I don't trash the belt or do anything else with it. So we'll hoist her up and set her down. 
All right, looks good. The belt is still threaded. That little piece of the puzzle is done. So now, now that I've got it threaded, what I can do is pull this belt through all the way so it's taut. So you can see the belt's taut from one or the other. Now, what I should be able to do is put this, uh, thread this belt back through the tensioner and the end here. And uh, the way this works is actually a little groove that's on the bottom side of this thing. I should be able to feed this belt through the groove on the bottom. This is nearly as bad as threading that motorboard. And then turning the handle on my left to feed it through. And you see it's coming through, it's coming at the top here. And I want to twist it until the belt is reasonably snug. Again, not super taut. I don't want to, you know, bust it or anything. The belt really isn't designed for uh, any tautness. And then the, the knob on, the, on my uh, right hand here, I turn that to tighten it. And that actually holds the belt in position. So now I have got the belt tightened. And if you take a look, as you see, as I move the machine back and forth, but basically I've now got my, uh, my uh, short belt threaded. So now I am going to move forward my next step. My next step is to put the encoders on. So that's the next thing I'm gonna do. So I'll be right back. Okay, um, now we're at the step where we're gonna install the encoders. And the encoders basically control the speed of the needle when you're sewing and moving the machine around. There are actually two of them. One of them attaches to the sewing machine. Again, this, this is gonna go back and forth, so it controls that motion of the machine. We're gonna put the other one on the carriage, and that controls the left-right portion of the machine. So, encoders pretty much look like this. Um, they have got a little wheel on them. In fact, these are new encoders. This is the first time I've seen one of these. It's got a much larger wheel than the old encoders did, which means it actually, when it rolls along the track, it's got a better grip on it, which I think is a very nice thing. Um, it's a much nicer encoder, I think, than the, uh, the ones that we previously had. So to install this, what I've done, I've effectively, you saw me tighten, the, tighten this lower belt in the last step. I've actually loosened it a little bit for the moment. And the reason I did that, I just want to kind of set the machine askew so that I can, uh, I can work with this one wheel here. I'm gonna take, if you're standing in front of the machine, it's the rearmost reel wheel on the left-hand side, or for I'm on the back of the machine, so it's me, it's the frontmost wheel on the right-hand side. Effectively, I'm gonna take my uh, my four millimeter wrench. I'm using the Allen wrench, I can get out a little easier, and I've already pre-loosened this. I'm gonna loosen this screw and take this wheel off, like that. Now, the differences between the lower encoder and the upper encoder, um, the directions on page seven of the setup refer to the upper encoder as the one with the silver spring. In other words, when you're looking at this thing, there's a little spring right there that's silver. This is opposed to the one that's for the lower encoder. The lower encoder, the spring is black. Um, and also says the word upper. <laughs> so if, you, if you worse comes to worse, just read the word on it. Uh, to me, the biggest difference is that the upper encoder's got a shorter cord because it's a shorter path to plug into the machine, whereas the lower encoder's, it's, it's further down, you've got a longer path. But, you know, I'm gonna go with upper and lower, I'm not gonna complain, so. What I'm gonna do is take the wheel I just removed, I'm gonna place that wheel on the end of the encoder, and I'm gonna place it on back where I took it off, um, with the wheel pointing toward the front of the machine, this little black wheel that, that kind of controls the motion. So I'm gonna put this wheel in place. And as usual, these things are a bit of a challenge. In fact, it would be helpful if I read the steps that said, remove sticker to install. Let me do that. I removed the sticker. Let's try this again, shall we? Get my Allen wrench in place and do the twist, shall we say. There we go, we've started it. All right, that's reasonably snug. So I've got this in place. Now what I'm gonna do, you know, I put the machine askew here. Let me line it back up on the track again here. So we're back to rolling again. And then I'm also gonna, I think about it, I, I loosened my belt so I could slide the machine off to the side. So I'm gonna tighten the short belt again. So that's all nice and snug, okay. Now what I need to do, I need to ensure that I've got a good connection to the uh, to, uh, the encoder on the machine. So to do that, there is a little spring, the little spring I talk about, I need to actually push this spring 
all the way in, and then as a little set screw that I'm going to use to tighten it. Okay, so I've gotten the wrench I need. I'm going with the Allen wrench again, simply because I don't have a lot of room to work here. I need to push this spring forward, right, really as far as I can, and then I take this Allen wrench and feed it into this little set screw and tighten it. And if I do this properly, there, it stays in place. Now the end result is, you'll see that needle is that, that a wheel is relatively snug to the track. So as it moves back and forth, the wheel turns and it makes good contact with the track. As an aside, you always want to make sure that your uh, track is clean to ensure that that wheel's always got good contact. So basically, I've put the uh, encoder on, I've pushed the little uh, item, the little uh, um, uh, uh, sets forward and used the two millimeter wrench, Allen wrench, to tighten the set screw to kind of hold this in place. So that's the upper encoder. I'm now going to pretty much repeat the exact same set of steps for the lower encoder. Uh, again, similar device. Let's take a picture of it here. This is what it looks like. Um, it's got its little set spring is black. Make sure you can see that. Hang on a second there. I can't, not sure if you can tell or not, but that's a black spring. It also has the word lower written on it, in case you missed that. And it's also got a longer cord. So again, the longer cord is actually used because it's got a further trip up. This wheel that was that used to be there has already been removed. Again, I removed it in an earlier step just so I could get the old encoder off. Now I'm going to put this new encoder on in pretty much the same way. It goes in the rear, the rear of the machine to the left, if you're standing in front, the rearmost wheel on the carriage, and the wheel should be inward. So I'm going to take my the wheel I took off, I'm going to feed it into the uh, into the encoder, and using my I believe it's a four millimeter wrench. I'm going to put the sucker, put this thing onto the carriage, line it up, get my wrench, and we'll start turning. All right. Okay, I've got the wheel on with the encoder. And it's the same process here. I've got, I've got the little, move my cord out of the way here, this little set spring. I need to push it toward inward. So that's kind of putting pressure down on the, uh, on the uh, encoder wheel. And then this little set screw right there. I'm going to turn that until it turns snug. All right. And now I have got the rear encoder uh, in place as well. Uh, so that's taken care of there. I've got my encoders in place. Uh, let's see, let me do some reading and I'll be back with the next step. All right, our next little task. I need to put the vertical channel lock back on. Uh, I took it off of uh, Esther. I'm now gonna put it on Esther May. So it's a similar process. I took it, it goes onto the, uh, the right rear wheel. Let me get my Allen wrench here. It's a very similar process. I'm going to take this wheel off. All right, I've got it off. Uh, I'm, I don't need the screw. I'm going to discard that and set it aside. And I'm going to take the wheel and feed it inside my channel lock like that. So it looks kind of like this, if you can kind of see. Now I'm going to take it and I replace it back right work back from whence it came uh hang on you know what i'm gonna do i'm gonna do exactly what i did the last time let me loosen <laughs> i'm getting really good at loosening these belts let me loosen the belt i'm just gonna jockey the machine off a little bit here now it gives me a little room to work that's snug i'll set the machine back square on the on the carriage Make sure the lock works. Let me just adjust it a little bit. These things twist and turn, so you can kind of adjust the height depending on how you need to. That looks good. So now I've got my my other my chin lock to move the machine back and forth in place. So that's taken care of. Let me go back again. I've loosened my belt again. I'm going to tighten my short belt. Take the left wheel, turn it snug. Take the right wheel and turn it so that it the belt's in place. Again, the teeth on the long belt go downward. 
So I'm feeding that belt through the clamp and I'm using, I'm feeding it to the slot and using the right hand on this side to feed the belt through. And you'll see it's coming out the bottom. Turn it until it's basically snug and turn the left one toward me to tighten it down. So now I've got my long belt back in place. So I'm pretty much done messing with the table. Now I just have to do a little bit more to the machine before we can actually get things turned on. So I'll be back in just a minute. Okay, our next step is a bit of a cosmetic step. I'm going to put on the plastic base assembly. Uh, that's on page six of the manual. Uh, basically it's putting these plastic pieces covering up the wheels so that it just looks pretty. Now, I've just realized that there is, there are two bases, there is a left and there's a right. And it's pretty easy to tell which is which. This is not the right one. And the reason I know that is if I try to put this on, it doesn't fit. It doesn't cover right. So this is really intended for the left side of the machine. The one that's on the right side, the big difference is that the front, the front pillar is a little bit longer than the rear pillar. So if I put this on, it fits quite nicely. So I just line everything up. Uh, I use the, uh, the M6 10 millimeter bolts. A couple little holes are screwed in place. We'll screw one in and take and screw the other in. Don't need, doesn't need to be super snug. It's just, again, just for, for appearances. Hides all the nasty hardware. Um, all right, so that's, that's the right side. Take my word for it. I'm going to do the same thing on the left side, and then I'll be back. Our next step isn't quite nearly as cosmetic. It's, it's fairly important. The masthead setup. This is from page four of the instructions. This actually bolts onto the side of the machine right here using the same M6 by four millimeter, 10 millimeter screws. The screws go into the bottom, fit into these two holes up here. So let me take my, oh, I moved it over here. My orange handled four millimeter wrench. And let's get this one uh, put in here. This one started, and while I'm starting this one, let me start the other one. Line that up over here. And they definitely change hands. Tighten that. Again, does not need super tightness. Let's make it snug. Okay, we have got the masthead set up. Uh, I think my next step is the display. We'll do that next. Okay, so our next step is actually installing the OLED display on the, on the, on the, uh, on the machine. Relatively straightforward, but there's a, a small little step you have to follow first. Um, if you take a look at the back, it's got a little ribbon cable that plugs into the, uh, plugs into the, ultimately it's going to plug into the, uh, into the uh, um, uh, Cunic 21. What the instructions say to do is, first of all, you need to make sure you feed this, this cable up through the slot, like so. So it's kind of hidden behind this little clamp here. Then you have to twist it 180 degrees. So you don't actually put it in straight forward. You actually have to kind of torque it around half, half, a, half a turn. So basically, I'm going to take it and twist it like this. And in its twisted mode, I'm going to plug it in to the back, to the top of the machine like so. And just drop, and it'll fit in. There's a, there's a bunch of pins on top of the machine right here. They just fit into place. So the cable's going to be twisted, but that looks, that's the way it's supposed to be. So once you do that, this little, this little thing here with a little tab on it, there's a slot. This thing just drops down into the slot like so. Just find it. You push it down and push it down until it clicks. Just like that. So now we've got the OLED display on the machine. So uh, that's relatively straightforward. Uh, we'll move on to a couple more steps. And before you know it, we're going to have this thing powered up. Be right back. All right, this next step is for the QCT people in the room. Uh, we need to actually mount a bracket to the top of the machine to actually mount the tablet that we're going to use to power QCT. The actual mount looks like this, and so it needs to mount to the top of the machine pretty much like that. The way this works, uh, it's kind of slick, I think, is how they do it. Um, I got a little, little screw right here. Uh, I'm going to use my two millimeter wrench. I'm going to take and remove this thing. 
take it off completely and discard it. I'm not going to need it anymore. And voila, I've got four mounting bolt, four mounting points. These mounting points are going to be what I'm going to mount my bracket on. So my bracket is going to sit here like this. I also have four of the uh, six millimeter screws, uh, the, the M6 screws, six millimeter. I'm going to mount them in place here. I'm not going to do all four on camera. I'll just do the first one. And using my, where do I, here it is, using my uh, four millimeter wrench, take, tighten it down. And again, I'm going to do the same process with the other three. And then when I'm done with this, I'm going to actually mount the tablet. So I'll be right back. Okay, so now you'll see I've got my four screws in place, my four bolts in place. I have mounted them, I've uh, set up the mounting bracket. Now I'm actually going to put the bracket in place that actually holds a tablet. Basically, it's the same same bracket I used before. I'm going to feed it through like so. And forgive me while I put the camera down. I actually have a wing nut that looks like this. I'm just going to take and uh, and put this on. Okay, so now I've tightened tightened the wing nut. I've got the mounting in place. I'm um, pretty much near the end. I just got to set the tablet up and plug all the cords in and uh, just tell the software what we got and then we should be good to go. So we're in the home stretch, folks. We'll be back in a second. Okay, now it's time to make our final connections. Uh, basically, again, if you recall, I left all the cabling plugged into the various parts of the machine when I first took Esther off. Now I gotta take that same cabling and plug it into Esther May. So first thing is this cord that looks like the telephone cable on the end. That plugs into the outlet that's got the little blue on it here. And I'll notice that all the connectors are on the very side of the machine, whereas on Esther's, they were in the back. So I'll plug this one in first. There's also a connector. It looks like one of these USBs, like you use to charge your phone, something along those lines. It looks like that one plugs in the very back of the machine, so I'll plug that in back here. I've then got my two encoders. I've got the upper and lower. It looks like the upper encoder plugs into the upper green connection here. We'll plug that in, so we're good to go there. The lower encoder, hanging from the bottom, plugs into the lower green connection. So plug that in. Uh, I've got the power cord laying on the floor here. I'll take the power cord that plugs into the back or plugged in and then the last let's see the last things i need to connect are the is the, is the stuff with the tablet i need to if i walk my camera around here the the usb the connector for the tablet that plugs into the top of esther also plugs into the top of esther may so we'll plug that in like that so that's now in place and then the last thing i need to do is the power cable for the tablet and of course that's going to be unique to your tablet however that plugs in so well, basically this is my connector for the tablet i'm going to take and plug this into the side now all my electrical connections are good to go um so with that being done i'm almost ready to go here really my own my final steps are to put the rails back on and then to get the tablet configured so we'll take care of all those and i'll be right back Okay, I'm now in the process of putting my rails back on. Uh, it's a relatively straightforward process, kind of almost exactly the reverse of how I took them off. The uh, the top rail just drops right drops right in as is. There's nothing fancy about it. The bottom rail here goes in on the side, but it's got this little uh, clamp that we took off. Just make sure you put this clamp in place and two screws to hold it in place. There's two in, on the right side and two on the left. Uh, that takes care of this clamp. I'm also, when I'm done, I'm gonna put up the take up rail and the idler rail. Um, similar thing, the idler rail goes in place. There's a little clamp that holds it. And then the take up rail goes right above here. So uh, that's pretty much it for the rails. We'll get those put in place and then uh, we'll come back and start talking about setting up the tablet. Okay, so now we've got the rails on now. Um, as far as the idler rail go, we did have to kind of jack things up a little bit. Um, with the other machine, the idler rail was a little low, as you saw it coming across the frame. So we raised it up a little bit. Specifically, if you take a look at the markings on the side, we raised it up to a four. And we're going to go with that. We may have to tweak it as we move along, but otherwise I think we're in good shape. So everything is plugged in. We've powered it all on. And the power-up sequence we typically use, uh, we always keep it unplugged from the wall. So that the wall socket is uh, is uh, where we've got it plugged into our surge protector. 
Um, everything is plugged into the power strip on the back, which is what comes with QCT. If you got QCT, you're going to have this. If you don't have QCT, you're probably just plugging the machine in, directly into a uh, power into a surge protector. Uh, but we plug it in. We power up the power strip, which has the uh, motorboard plugged in, so it fires up the motorboard. We then hit a separate switch on the back, which powers up the machine, and we've got it all powered up now. You see, it's all nice and brightly lit up. They walk around to the front now, and. Basically, the last thing we'll, we'll typically turn on for QCT is the actual tablet itself. And there's just one little step that you have to follow for QCT and make sure you do this, otherwise you're going to have a few issues. I'm going to fire QCT up. And it, same thing, make sure the needle is up and uh, move the carriage to the center of the sewing area. It's testing, it's moving the motorboard to make sure everything is good. And it's usual startup stuff. Once we get it to our main screen. Okay, now we go into help. And then I want to click on about. And you'll see, I want to go to sewing machine information. I'm going to click this. And you'll see it is currently set for a quilt motion QNIC 14 plus. That is no longer the case. So you see there's a little prop right, uh, item right here that says change sewing machine model. I'm going to click that. I'm going to click Cunique. I'm going to say Cunique 21 and do OK. And that should be it. If I go back and look at sewing machine information again, it should now say Quilt Motion Cunique 21. So I'll say OK and OK, get back to the main screen. And that should be it. Our hope is that this machine is now ready to use. So at this point, I'm going to bequeath it to my lovely wife, Janet, and let her start playing around with it. But that's basically the setup. Feel free to ask questions. Otherwise, I hope you found this useful. Have a good one.